Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. Welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking through syllogisms. Now, syllogisms come up a lot in the UK CAT, in the decision making section. A lot of students seem to struggle with the concept and how to grasp it the best. I'm going to go through every single syllogism question you get in the exam and how to approach them. So what are syllogisms? Syllogisms contain two or more statements which are followed by a series of conclusions. You need to use logical reasoning to deduce which conclusions follow from the information given. The information may not actually make actual sense. For example, you may get a statement that says, all bananas are vegetables, all vegetables are desserts. Now, in your mind, you know that this for a fact is not true, but you need to take away all your external knowledge and apply logical reasoning to answer these questions. Once you crack the technique for syllogisms, it becomes much easier. You should read all the information multiple times until it makes logical sense. Try and pay special attention to words such as some, none, all and only. Now I'm going to go on to say why that this, that this is the case. And you should never make assumptions about the information using external knowledge. Now this will only confuse you a lot more. Syllogisms are designed to trick you. And those candidates that use external knowledge will definitely get these questions wrong. And last but not least, always draw Venn diagrams wherever possible. Now I'm going to talk you through how to do this now. So it's recommended that you use Venn diagrams. These aren't as straightforward as the ones you use in your maths exams or that you might use in Venn diagram questions. We will now go through the different types of Venn diagrams and when to use them. So you might get a pattern, the most straightforward pattern in syllogisms, sum A or B. Now A will be a category or a noun and B will also be a category and a noun. Now from this statement sum A or B, you might ask yourself what conclusions follow. Now this is what the question will be like. It will say place yes if the conclusion follows, place no if the conclusion does not follow and you'll be given a series of statements and you have to deduce which of them are correct. From this statement sum A or B, we know that if sum A or B we can safely assume that sum A are not B. This is represented by the part of A that has no overlap with B. By the same logic, we know that sum B are not A. This is represented by the part of the B circle that does not overlap with A. We also know that sum A are B because this is said in the statement. This is represented by the overlap between A and B. By that same logic, we also know that sum B are A. This is represented again by the overlap in the middle. An example now, some giraffes are sharks. Have a go at drawing a Venn diagram for this. You should get a Venn diagram looking like this with giraffes as one circle replacing A and sharks as another circle replacing B. From this statement, we know that some giraffes are not sharks. This is shown by the part of circle that has giraffes that does not have any overlap with sharks. By the same logic, we know that some sharks are not giraffes, as we have an area in the circle of sharks that does not overlap with giraffes, and the innermost part of the circle where both giraffes and sharks overlap. We have some giraffes are sharks, and some sharks are giraffes. Pattern 2 now, all A are B. Now this is a very common uh, question they like to use in the exam, so make sure you pay a lot of attention to this. From this statement, we know that all A are B, this is because it's said in the statement, some A are B and some B are A. Let me explain this with an example. If a statement said all beaches are sites, we would have this Venn diagram. Now, if all beaches are sites, we know for a fact that some beaches are sites, because if you think about it, some beaches have to be sites since all of them are sites. Now, we know that if all beaches are sites, some sites will be beaches, 
This statement is actually one that does follow, follow real life sense. We have about hundreds and thousands of sites, but we only have about 10,000 beaches, let's say. If you have a million sites and 10,000 beaches, we know that all beaches are sites, and by that same logic, some beaches are sites. And if of those 1 million sites we have, 10,000 are also beaches, we know that of those 1 million sites, some sites are also beaches. Moving on to pattern 3 now, we have a statement that says some A are not B. Now, from this statement, for some A to not be B, that must mean that some A have to be B. Because the statement is implying that some A are B for that statement to be true above. Now, the Venn diagram I have drawn here is representative of the statement some A are B. This is because it's actually quite hard to draw a Venn diagram that represents some A are not B. So I have drawn a Venn diagram which represents some A are B. So from this statement, some snakes are not reptiles, the only statement that can be drawn is some snakes are reptiles. That's the only possible conclusion that can be drawn from this statement. Any other conclusion could be potential, but we don't know for sure. Whenever you see a potential conclusion, we always put no. A conclusion can only follow if it is 100% correct. Pattern 4 now. Now I understand I am going at these questions relatively quickly, so feel free to pause the video and look at every pattern because there's around 10 to 11 patterns here. So we have to try and get through as much as we can. With pattern 4, no A or B. Here the pattern is a lot more straightforward. If we know that no A or B, we can also safely assume that no B or A. With the statement no spreads of peanut butter, we know that no spreads of peanut butter and that no peanut butter are spreads. With this statement now, some A or B and some B or C. Pause the video now and have a go at drawing the Venn diagram for this. Now, the pattern you should have gotten is the Venn diagram shown here. We have A and B, which overlap, and B and C, which also overlap. As you can see, A and C are on opposite ends of the Venn diagram. So now, what conclusions can be drawn between A and B? We know from, from before that some A are B and that some B are A. We also know that some A are not B and some B are not A. Now this was discussed in a lot of detail in pattern 1. Between B and C, we know that some B are C and that some C are B, because again, they overlap here. Now the other two I've also mentioned on for A and B also exist for B and C. I haven't repeated them again, um, because hopefully they're slowly ingrained in your head now. Um, if not, again, watch the video back again, and hopefully it will be. Now between A and C, now you might think there is a relationship between A and C. There could be but it is an unknown relationship. Let's look closely why that is. So, first of all, just by looking at the Venn diagram, we can see that A and C are on opposite ends of the diagram. And so from it, straight away, you should think there is no relationship. But what if those that, if we know that some A are B, right? So of those that are A and B, what if those B are also C? Right, it could be that this overlap could also be present in this overlap between B and C. The overlap between A and B will be pre present on the overlap between B and C. So it could be that items are A, B and C, or it could be that items are just A. But because we don't know the answer to this, we always assume there is no relationship. For example, you may see a statement that says some A are C. This could be a potential conclusion, but we don't know for sure, therefore we place no. Same with all A is C. This is not a conclusion, and no A is C. The relationship is unknown, therefore the conclusion does not follow. Have a go at this example now. Some buildings are skyscrapers and some skyscrapers are towers. Draw the Venn diagram and 
Note down the conclusion that can be drawn from A and B, between B and C, and A and C. Now, this is the Venn diagram you should have gotten. And between buildings and skyscrapers, some buildings are skyscrapers, some skyscrapers are buildings. Between skyscrapers and towers, some skyscrapers are towers, some towers are skyscrapers. And between building and towers, it, the relationship is unknown, as we said before. Pattern 6 now. All A are B and all B are C. Have a go at drawing a Venn diagram here. So this is the Venn diagram you should have gotten. You have all A or B and all B or C. Now what I would do is always take each of these statements one by one. First tackle all A or B. That would be the usual all A or B diagram, which is where you have one circle enclosed in another. The circle, the smaller circle would be A and the large, slightly larger circle would be B. Now, the second statement, all B or C. Therefore, we draw another circle around C. Now, this should be fairly straightforward what the patterns are between A and B, between B and C. However, between A and C, it may be slightly more complicated, but we'll go through the relationship as well. Between A and B, now that we know that all A are B, by that same rule, some A have to be B, and if all A are B, some B have to be A. Imagine you have a massive ocean. Now imagine that ocean to be C, okay? And by C, I don't mean the actual C, I mean letter C. Sorry for that, maybe I should have shown an easier letter. Now imagine this massive ocean represented by letter C. You have a small part of that ocean represented by letter B, and in that small part, you have a tiny, tiny part that represents the letter A. Now, that tiny, tiny part of the ocean is part of the slightly larger part representing letter B, since we know that all A are B. That slightly larger part is a portion of the entire ocean represented by letter C. Okay? So that should hopefully make it slightly more straightforward what the relationships here are. If B is an enclosed circle within C, we know that all B are C, as represented by the statement, and if all B are C, some B have to be C, and some C have to be B. Now, between A and C, remember what I said, that tiny, tiny part of the ocean is in enclosed in that slightly larger part of the ocean, representing letter B. So if all A are B, whatever relationship exists between B and C will also be true between A and C by default. It's kind of a label on A. All of A are labelled letter B, for example. So whatever relationship B and C have, A has to have that relationship. They have no choice. So all A are C, some A are C, and some C are A. This is by association with B. For example, this statement, all cities are countries and all countries are continents. This is absolute nonsense in real life. But remember, follow logical reasoning. Draw a Venn diagram for this question if you can. This is the sort of Venn diagram you should get. You should get a massive circle representing continents, slightly smaller circle than that representing countries, and an even smaller circle representing cities. Between cities and countries, we know that all cities are countries, some cities are countries, and some countries are cities. Between countries and continents, we know that all countries are continents, some countries are continents, and some continents are countries. Finally, between cities and continents, we know that all cities are continents, some cities are continents, and some continents are cities. Let's move on to the next pattern now, slightly more complicated. Some A or B and all B or C. I want you to have a go at drawing the Venn diagram for this question by pausing the video now. Now, this is the Venn diagram you should have gotten. Remember what I said, take each part of the statement independently. First, we draw A and B. We know that some A or B, so there has to be the overlapping region. Next, we look at the pattern between B and C. We know that all B are C, therefore B is a smaller circle enclosed in C. And now we just put the two together. 
and we should get this. Okay? So now tell me, what relationship is there between A and B? Same as before, some A are B and some B are A. Now, what's next? Between B and C. Between B and C, we know that all B are C are said in the statement. By the same logic, some B have to be C and some C are B. Now again, slightly trickier now. What is the relation between A and C? What do you think it is? Pause the video. Right, so we have the pattern here. It says some A are C and some C are A. This is again a pattern by association. Because we know that all B are C and some A are B, some of those A that are B will also be C. This is because all B are C, okay? A has no choice but to avoid C, okay? Imagine you have 100 units of A. We know that some A are also B. Of those 100 units, you have 20 units which are also B. Those 20 units that are B will also be C. This is because all B are C. Now, those 20 units were A because they were of the 100 units that were A. Those 20 units that were therefore A and also B. And because all B are C, those 20 units have to be A, B and C. Therefore, of those 100 units of A, some A are C because they are B and some C are A. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Now, between shoes, slippers and footwear, Draw the Venn diagram now. This is the Venn diagram you should have gotten. Between shoes and slippers, we know that some shoes are slippers and some slippers are shoes. Between slippers and footwear, we know that all slippers are footwear, therefore some slippers have to be footwear and some footwear are slippers. Now it's a slightly trickier one now, between shoes and footwear. We know that some shoes are footwear and some shoes, sorry, some footwear are shoes. Okay? Pattern 8 now. Okay, so now remember what I said before. Take each part of the statement independently. So draw the Venn diagram now by pausing the video. Okay, so between A and B, we know that A is a circle enclosed in B. Between B and C, we know that some B or C, therefore we had this set up. And now just combine the two to get a Venn diagram that looks like this. Now, the Venn diagram really helps us hone in on what the relationship is, and I'll tell you why. Between A and B, again, straightforward as we said before, all A or B and some A or B, and some B are A. Between B and C, also very straightforward. Between B and C, we have some B or C and some C or B. Between A and C, just by looking at the Venn diagram, there is an unknown relationship. Although we know that all A are B, the overlap between B and C is that between those that are A or those that are non-A. Again, let's use the example of 100 units. There are 100 units of B, okay? 20 units of B are also C because some B are C. Those 20 units that are B, sorry, those 20 units that are C, are those also the 20 units that are A? Because whilst we know that all A are B, we don't know that all B are A. We just know that some B are A. Okay? It could be non-A, B that overlap with C. Let's look at an example. Hopefully it'll be a bit more straightforward. For example, all mobiles are gadgets and some gadgets are portable. Draw the Venn diagram here by pausing the video. This is what you should have gotten, okay? Between mobiles and gadgets, the relationship here. Between gadgets and portables, the relationship here. And between mobiles and portables, there is an unknown relationship, okay? Moving on now. All B are A and all C are A. What's the relation between A and B? We have this. 
between C and A, we have this, and combine the two and you should get this. So now what can be deduced? Very straightforward here between A and B. All A, all B are A, some B are A, and some A are B. Now be careful here. Here it's all B are A instead of what we had before, all A are B. Okay, it's still very straightforward because instead of, we just basically have to flip it now. We know that all B are A, therefore some B have to be A, and some A have to be B. Okay, between A and C, again, very straightforward. Between B and C, there is an unknown relationship, okay? Whilst we know the relationship between B and A, and C and A, nothing is told between B and C. There is therefore an unknown relationship. An example now, all cars are trucks and all lorries are trucks. This is the Venn diagram you should have gotten. These are the conclusions drawn between trucks and cars between trucks and lorries, and between cars and lorries. Between cars and lorries, it is unknown, okay? Whilst we know that all cars are trucks and all lorries are trucks, that doesn't mean there's a relationship between cars and lorries, okay? Imagine it this way. If the statement said, all footballers are left-footed, all rugby players are left-footed, from that statement, we don't know enough about footballers and rugby players. Are all footballers rugby players? Are all rugby players football? Are some rugby players footballers? Are some footballers rugby players? We don't know for sure from the statement given. Therefore, remember, whenever you don't know and it's an unknown relationship, it's always no. The conclusion does not follow. Pattern 10. All A or B and no B or C. Again, take it step by step. We have this for between A and B. Between B and C, we have this. Now, the line just represents the fact that the relationship is between B and C, and I'll show you why that is later on when things get a bit more complicated. And we just combine the two again as before. These are the conclusions drawn between A and B as before, between A and C, and between B and C. Now, first let's look at B and C. We know that no B are C and no C are B. Some B are not C because no B are C, and, no, and some C are not B since no C are B. Now, between A and C, the relationship that exists between B and C has to exist by default between A and C, like we said before, okay? Whatever applies to B has to apply to A. Have a go at this example by drawing a Venn diagram. This is the Venn diagram you should have gotten. And these are the conclusions that can be drawn. Okay, have a moment to read these here. Okay, moving on. Pattern 11 now. All A or B and no A or C. So this is slightly trickier from before because before we had no B or C. Now the reason I've drawn this line here is because it makes it easier to see the fact that the relation is between A and C. So again, the relationship between A and B should be very straightforward. All A or B, some A or B, and some B or A. Between A and C, again, very straightforward because we know a no A or C. Now, no A or C, no C or A, some A are not C, and some C are not A. Now, what is the relationship between B and C? What do you think it is? Well, some B are not C. This is because we know that no A are C, okay? And again, imagine there are 100 units of B, okay? 10 units are A, for example. Of those 10 units that are A, no A are C, okay? So those are not C. And just from the Venn diagram, it should be clear the relation between B and C, okay? An example now, all cherries are pencils and no cherries are pillows. Okay, so now instead of cherries, pencils and pillows, it might just be easier to use A, B and C, just so you know what sort of Venn diagram to draw. This is the Venn diagram you should have gotten, hopefully. And these are the conclusions that can be drawn. Okay, we'll move on now. Now, what if you had a pattern that said, some A are B and no B are C? 
I want you to pause the video now and try and draw the Venn diagram here. Okay, so now we look at the pattern between A and B. This is what you should have gotten. Between B and C, this is what you should have gotten. And then we just combine it. Okay, between A and B, conclusion again, very straightforward. Between B and C, very straightforward as before. And between A and C, some A are not C. Okay, this is slightly trickier, but think of it this way. Some A are B, meaning some of B have to be A. Okay, and if no B are C, those B that have to be A cannot be C. Okay, therefore some A are not C. Let's look at an example. Some psychology students are graduates and no graduates are mathematicians. Draw the Venn diagram now by pausing the video. This is the Venn diagram you should have gotten, and these are the conclusions that can be drawn. Between psychology students and graduates, very straightforward relationship. Between graduates and mathematicians, again, very straightforward relationship as before. Between psychology students and mathematicians, it's slightly more trickier. Now, the reason some psychology students are not mathematicians is because some psychology students are graduates and those that are graduates cannot be mathematicians because no graduates are mathematicians, okay? I hope that makes sense and this is the last pattern you'll get. These are just some general rules, okay? Whenever you, These are just shortcuts to take whenever you're short of time. Whenever you see no and no, you know that there's no relationship. When you see all and all, you know they're all connected. Between all and some, there is no immediate conclusion. Between some and all, some relationship. Between some and no, some are not related. And some and some, there is no immediate conclusion. Now, this is a very, very theory-driven section. Watch the video back and look over any examples you were stuck on. I'd advise you to read over the ebooks as well uh, to make sure it really, really locks into your mind. I hope that helps and hopefully syllogisms will be a lot more straightforward from now on. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this free Medic Mind tutorial. For £30, you can unlock all 150 tutorials in our online course. The course covers four full days of UK CAT teaching, as well as a course to help you with your personal statement and interview. You're free to ask as many questions as you'd like to our teachers, and with each tutorial, you can read along using our five UK CAT ebooks, covering 500 pages of theory and questions to guide you every step of the way.